Good evening. Tonight, Russian tanks and troops are moving through what was once a part of the Soviet Union. The nation of Georgia, one of the republics that split off almost two decades ago now, tonight it may be in danger of splitting apart. A province within Georgia wants its own independence, so Georgia sent its own troops in, then Russia answered. And the entry of those Russian troops has led to a full-on power struggle. Russia wants the elected president of Georgia out of office. Georgia wants the Russian troops out of their country. And in the meantime, civilians are being killed, hundreds if not thousands of them, as bombs fall and the world debates how to end this. We have two reports tonight, beginning with NBC's Tom Aspel. Russian tanks and soldiers poured into the devastated South Ossetian capital of Skinvali today after crushing a three-day Georgian attack to take control of its breakaway province. The ferocity of the fighting could be seen on the streets. Georgian soldiers retreated. Julian Mannion of our British partner network, ITN, confirmed today they were out of South Ossetia. The Georgian army has now pulled back to where I'm standing, right at the border. And in fact, some Georgian soldiers are trying to retrieve one of their own shot-up vehicles just behind me over there. Russian artillery fire followed the retreating Georgians who later offered to negotiate a ceasefire. But Russia accuses Georgia of a genocide in South Ossetia, with 2,000 people killed and thousands of others made homeless by the fighting. Many have already fled north into Russia. The most complicated issue to be solved now is the evacuation of people, said the Russian commander in Shkinvali. There are many killed and wounded. Russian warplanes bombed targets inside Georgia again today, and the Russian Navy deployed ships to blockade the Georgian Black Sea coast, raising fears that this small war might soon have big consequences. As it escalates, it threatens oil and gas pipelines to the West, to Europe, uh, and it threatens to really damage Russia's relationship with the United States and with Europe when we need them in United Nations resolutions dealing with Iran. At the UN today, where the Security Council met to discuss the crisis for the fourth time in three days, the U.S. ambassador accused Russia of waging terror in Georgia, while Russia rejected calls for a halt to the fighting. On the immediate ceasefire, uh, I think I've, I've explained quite clearly why uh, this is not an adequate answer to the situation. Georgia urged the UN to take immediate action to stop Russian attacks. Unless Security Council will act now, the Security Council's credibility is strongly challenged by the Russian Federation. Tonight, American military officials tell NBC News they've begun airlifting some of Georgia's 2,000 troops back home from Iraq, where they've been serving in the U.S.-led coalition. The U.S. says it's in close contact with the Russian military to avoid any kind of mid-air confrontation while the airlift is underway. And with fighting still going on in Georgia, that's a very real danger. Tom Aspel, NBC News, London.